Hello, I'm Robert Largent, and we're going to talk about emergency shutoff switches today. Here's your agenda for today. And when I say e-stop, I mean the emergency shutoff switch, or the emergency stop, or the, sometimes it's called the kill switch, but it's usually the big red button outside your gas station. This is the graphic that explains the funding responsibilities to pay for environmental compliance, real property maintenance and repairs at AFE's gas stations. Equipment in red is real property to be paid for by the military with appropriated funds or APF. Repairs to the dispensers that are colored green should be paid for by AFE's non-appropriated funds or NAF. This is an example of why LP does ECAP inspections at our gas stations annually. During a recent ECAP inspection, LP discovered that there were no written documentation of the e-stop being tested at this location. An accident occurred. The site was not staffed. Fuel leaked from a hose during a customer transaction. And then the e-stop did not function. And they had to call the fire department out. And finally, they were able to get the fuel leak to stop. But in the meantime, they lost over 24 gallons worth of fuel onto the ground, making it much more of an incident than it should have been if the e-stop was functioning. This is an example of an incident where the e-stop might have been useful. This incident shows where the lack of an e-stop caused the loss of a life. This is the worst case scenario, and it is our number one goal to prevent these life-ending accidents. When you're looking around your site, one of the things that we want to make sure of is when you're out there, look around. Look and see if you were getting fuel at the furthest point from the gas station. If you could look up and readily identify the emergency cutoff. Make sure that you can see it. Maybe the sign isn't big enough. Maybe the sign is perfect. Just try and think outside the box. Think like a customer. What would you want to know if you were in a customer and a fire began at the site? You can see the cutoffs really well from the dispensers. Emergency cutoff at the door. And another emergency shutoff with a very good sign and a spill kit readily available close to the fire extinguisher and the other cutoff switch is right around that corner. The dispensers are right here. Fire extinguisher labeled. What is wrong with this? This is an incident where using the e-stop is imperative to the safety of everyone around the area. Customers are unpredictable. We're going to talk about safety of the gas station now. Over the years, we've learned gas stations are not safe places. Accidents occur to a wide variety of reasons. They can be customer caused. They can be equipment related. They can be a delivery driver overfilling a fill point. So there's lots of different ways that bad things can happen. And the emergency shutoff switch is a big thing that can help when bad things happen. So we need to make sure those work. Like any other piece of equipment, sometimes they quit working properly. We need to make sure they work. No one knows when they will have a bad day. Plan for the worst and hope for the best. If this happened at your store, would you know what to do? The link on this slide will take you to a YouTube playlist of gas station accidents. Or just search Robert Largent on YouTube. Sometimes people make mistakes, so we need to pay attention when we're at a gas station and look around and see what's going on. See if there's issues that maybe haven't been identified before. For instance, in this situation, the actual emergency shutoff switch ended up behind an ice machine. And I've been at other locations where they've been behind the red box machine. Uh, they've been faded so bad you couldn't read them. So just look around your sites and, and make sure everything is easy for a customer to find. The e-stop cannot be inaccessible. This accident is an example of the breakaway not functioning. 
The customer drives away with the nozzle still in their gas tank. The hose pulls off of the dispenser, and fuel sprays all over the forecourt. Now, the only way to stop that flow of fuel is an emergency shutoff switch. We know it's common sense to test your equipment and make sure it works properly, but there are guidance documents out there for you to follow to make sure these are tested properly. The Petroleum Equipment Institute puts out three different guidances, the RP500, RP900, and the RP1200, that all recommend testing your e-stops. For the National Fire Prevention Association, they also have guidance in Chapter 6.7, in Chapter 8.4 of NFPA 30A, that also tell you to test your e-stops and make sure they work properly. This is Appendix C11 of the recommended practice from PEI 1200. So PEI RP 1200 puts this out there in their appendix that tells you how to test an emergency shutoff switch so that you know that it works correctly. This is intended for a contractor to do. Make sure your fire department is involved with this because a lot of these e-stops should communicate with your fire department and let them know when there's an emergency at your gas stations. This is a zoomed in picture of Appendix C11 from the PEI RP 1200. These tests should be completed by a contractor to ensure the e-stop functions properly. For instance, make sure e-stops are easily accessible and shut off the sub-turbine pump. Hopefully someone knows how to restart the system after the e-stop has been used. This your fuel system checklist poster. It should be displayed prominently in your store. When you look towards the bottom of the poster you can see test e-stop in the left column and a check mark in the annual column. This is a reminder to test the e-stop annually and can be accomplished during the other required annual tests. These are all your monthly environmental messages that we're calling tank talks. If you need any other of these past messages from the last year or back about eight years, you can find them all here. And if you have questions that you can't find answered or topics that you think should would make a good monthly environmental message, please let me know. And I can add whatever you need to these environmental messages. These are resources for you. We try to give you everything you need to help you succeed. This is your environmental team, and we only have one need, and that's for you to succeed. So if you need any help with anything, please let us know. Thank you for your time.